excited? Yeah. Right, let's do this in here. Try to fit it in the door. Let's take a look and see. Nice, that's cool. That is cool. Right, I've stood the box up so we can get a Proper look at it and slide it out. The camera stays focused for this bit now. That's pretty fancy looking. Let's see if we can lift it up. Bit of weight in it, I think it's around 20 kilos. That is a good solid unit. We've got two PV inputs, so two different solar arrays can be hooked into this one unit, and the MPPT controller will regulate them separately. We've got the input here for the AC cables, and the input over here for the DC connection to the battery. Underneath this cover here is the COM ports. You can parallel this with up to six units if you want to. And we've got some Ethernet ports for laptop communication, another Ethernet port for a separate battery management unit. We've got a micro USB port, again, um, for USB on the go and for communication. And one more port over here. I'm not sure what this is for. I'll have to read up about it. And this final port over here is because this control panel is removable and you can bring it in where as far as the cable will reach and um, basically so that you can keep the control panel totally separate inside the house if you want to and leave the inverter off running in a different location so guys i've yet to see anything online from anyone who owns one of these things um, i don't think they're that common to be honest with you it's got a lot of great features um, that it shares with the smaller unit and it's got a few additional features as well like built-in Wi-Fi. The built-in MPPT also has a lower startup voltage of only 90 volts compared to the 120 volts in the small unit which means we can start getting power in in lower light levels which is also a huge benefit given that we live in Ireland. When it comes to the internal programming both of them are both fully customizable as well as having preset programs. However, this one now has programs for specific battery brands like Wico and Saltaro, as well as your usual pylon techs, lead acids and lithium ions, and they can either be fully customized or run those automated programs. The dust filters are now on the outside, easy to remove, whereas those ones are on the inside and you have to open up the casing to, to clean them out, which is uh, a bit handier. And also, one thing that I kind of love, because I'm a big child, is the LED light bar here, which is fully programmable as well. I know, stupid little thing. So before we start changing the system to run this unit, let's take a quick look at the old unit, what readings we've got in the last three months since we connected the solar array and um, see what we got from it and what it's put out. So in the three months since we've had this connected to the 3.6 kilowatt array up on the roof, we've We've brought in 0.1 of a megawatt, which is 100 kilowatts, and we've used 0.2 of a megawatt, which is 200 kilowatts. So the reason for the discrepancy there is because of the other solar array and battery usage overnight. The last video we put out and the community post just beforehand uh, on building the battery bank here seems to have triggered quite a few people who began to fill up the comments section with stuff that wasn't quite accurate or just wasn't true at all. So I want to correct those right now for you guys so you have the correct information going forward. First of all, about the cable here that we use to connect the solar array on the roof down to the inverter. AC and DC current travel differently through a wire. AC current tends to travel around the outside of the conductor, the metal bit in the middle. This is called the skin effect and it's because of opposing eddy currents that are created by the electro electromagnetic field with AC. DC current, however, travels through the entire cross-section of the wire. 
the whole of the metal bit, not just the middle, as was said in one comment. Perhaps it was misworded. Either way, that's the cold hard facts on it. So guys, this wiring here is 10 mil squared, seven strand, twin and earth, which is normally seen in AC applications. However, because of its ratings, it's also suitable to use in our DC application with the solar panels. It's rated for up to 500 volts and 44 amps in conduit and has a loss of 4.4 millivolts per meter. Our solar array operates on 430 to 450 volts with a maximum current of 8 to 10 amps. Because of the nature of how DC travels through a conductor, it's perfectly fine to use and we don't see any losses from it. So at the risk of triggering a few more people, here's an interesting scenario I was able to record the other day that you guys might find useful. It's a dull dark grey day outside, the light levels are extremely low. The input from the 3.6 kilowatt array on the roof is only barely 60 watts. Now there's very little on inside the house, um, it's only like the fridge I think is running at the moment. Um, it's taken 197 watts and it's having to take eight, seven, eight amps from the batteries. However, if we move across to the PWM controller, it's bringing in 6.7 amps at 27 volts from a 24 volt, 1400 watt array. So that was one of the rare occasions where the old school PWM controller beat the more modern, more efficient MPPT. I was just lucky to catch it on camera. But it's worth remembering for you guys out there, for building your own systems, to have that bit of resilience no matter what the conditions, have a bit of everything going on. Like at the end of the day lads, innovation never comes from repetition, copying what other people do. You've got to do your own thing. And more importantly, don't ever listen to the naysayers and the know alls So guys, sorry for rambling on so much in this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you'll join me for the next one where we're going to start assembling this beast of an inverter. Until then, don't forget to like and subscribe. Do take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you in the next one.